Hi, I'm Walt Rada, and welcome to The Lazy Cartoonist. Today I'm going to show you how I draw various dogs. It's, it's up to you what you want to do with noses, but I keep mine simple. It's just usually a, a round nose. Dogs, of course, don't have round noses, but in the cartoon world you can really do what you like. And the German Shepherds have usually a long nose. And the dog that I've been drawing, which is named Rocky in the cartoon, he had a long nose, and German Shepherds, of course, have pointy ears. We give them a couple pointy ears. You bring the uh, nose down into the dog's chest here, the back down like so. And of course, dogs have two forelegs. So you sketch one in there. Now dogs have prominently three. Actually, in real life, just like drawing human hands, a human hand has five fingers, but we only draw four. And the same sort of thing applies to dogs and cats and others. They actually have four little toes on their, their paws, but I only draw them with three. And it still gives the effect of having paws. Now a dog's belly generally, just like a human chest, sort of will arc upwards like so. And then we have what is called, and you've all heard it, the dog's leg. This is this um, sort of hip. I'm not sure if I'm using the right term here, but it will go back and the rear dog's rear leg kind of extends backwards like this. This is how I draw it. And I got the three toes again. And then you can draw the second one sort of off kilter to the first. And you can pull, draw the second one just sort of off kilter in the background. I over, sort of overdid this dog leg. <laughs> a little too uh, emphasized, so I'll just uh, lessen that a bit. And then German Shepherds, of course, usually have uh, a big tail up in the air like so. Some cartoonists and artists draw more elaborate eyes. Some of your manga and anime drawing have very elaborate eyes. Mine are just dots. Most cartoonists are just dots. Rocky, he had, like German Shepherds prominently do, had a black nose. Uh, Rocky has a collar, put a little collar there, dog tags. He had a very prominent mark on his back, like so. So here you have a very poorly drawn German Shepherd, <laughs> but I think you can tell what it is. And Rocky has featured in a great many cartoons. And right now you can hear our current dog having a drink. <laughs> <laughs> she is not a very elegant drinker. She's German Shepherd Chow Mix. Very unusual dog <laughs> in a lot of aspects. The other prominent uh, dog character that's been in the cartoon, my cartoon for years, is a uh, Poodle Schnauzer Mix, or uh, Schnoodle as they're called. And we got him as a puppy, and he was a very animated little dog, and he stayed a puppy his whole life. It was 14 years, because <laughs> he was just such a fun character. Now, of course, a lot of dogs have sort of a jolly little face, and in real life, Dewey's name was Malcolm, but we named him Dewey. Just to draw the little jowls here with a bit of fur, because they were a very fluffy dog. They have floppy ears, so I drew them kind of fluffy, with a little bit of a hair sticking up on the top there. A round little body. Bring down the uh, four legs, just like uh, we did with the German Shepherd. Give him three little toes, and he's got a little dog leg too in the back. He had a little stubby tail stuck up like so and again you kind of just indicate the other paw behind it like so it's a funny thing when you you draw cartoon animals if you read uh, Garfield it seems always like Garfield's actually talking but I don't think he's really speaking out loud because that would be really absurd but it's what he's thinking and his thoughts are uh, transmitted in the same way you would a human speaking although he's not really speaking and so in this similar way I had the dogs speaking to each other in Rocky's case his mouth, I draw sideways, like I did my human characters. Their mouth is kind of on the side. I'm not sure why that's a thing, but it just it seems rather effective. His mouth would traverse halfway into the black part here. I will show you on the when I do the shading on the computer. The sideways mouth wouldn't work on, on Dewey's character. Uh, for some reason, it just didn't look right with the jowl there. So in his case, I gave him a little mouth down here. If he's talking, you see a little mouth come down. There he is. Dogs, of course often have their tongue out when they're hungry or thirsty so you can add a tongue that way rocky cartoon dog was named after one of our favorite german shepherds we had for years he was actually a rescue dog long ago and he was just a terrific dog when i first started drawing the german shepherds i modeled them after rocky who when he passed the mantle was passed on to numerous german shepherds after him but the name stuck and the look stuck now, these are the cartoon dogs that I draw in my strip. If you've had a chance to see any of them, you'll see them in action. Often, Rocky, because he's old and he's seen it all and he's very wise and experienced, he just kind of lays around 
most of the time. The easiest way for me to draw that is he's on the ground. He, he draws long nose, he draws his, his ears. As I did before, you only see a portion of him. But since he's lying down, you bring the, uh, the foreleg bent like so. And you emphasize again the uh, three toes. But I'll make it look like his other one is crossed over so he's in a nonchalant sort of pose. And it's really easy to just draw it like so. It looks like his other leg is cr crossed over the foreleg. It's just an effective way to draw him, kind of looking like he's... He's watching the antics of the little pup who usually comes to him with some exciting story that uh, Rocky has already seen before and advises him not to get too excited about. So you extend uh, extend Rocky's body like so. Of course, you've still got the, the cow leg like so, and it would kind of come forward like that. And often dogs have their tail tucked around them a little bit. You can do it like so, or just straight out. These, of course, are just rough sketches as I've talked about before. When you do the inking and finishing the more complete drawing, and since I'm a pretty miserable artist, as I've also said, <laughs> corrections are my drawing style. When they're, they're running, dogs actually kind of run in two different ways. Of course, full flight, you bring the dog leg out like so, draw the paws so they're extended backwards, the foreleg out with the paws stretched. Often, if you want to indicate movement, you have the tongue hanging out like so, because he's, he's going really fast. But dogs also sort of trot sometimes, if you watch them. In that case, you, you have this leg kicking back as you would in full flight, but you just extend the inner leg in a little bit. In the background, the two legs, say, on the left side are forward and back, and the other two go inwards to each other and then reverse. This is how they trot when they're not running full speed. You, uh, you want to offer some opinion on how to draw dogs? <laughs> dog leg comes forward like so and the farther leg extends outward. In the sketching part a lot of times it looks quite bad. When I've finished uh, with the inking they look a little better. Not tremendously so but a little better. <laughs> and you kind of extend the, uh, you make the paw look like it's facing backwards to give the, uh, the impression of motion. Give the paw, flip it up a little bit and sometimes you can Give it a little depth by drawing it like so. Uh, angle the toes or fingers in a human case downwards a bit so you you give a little bit more of a three-dimensional look to it. If you want to draw a simple dog, again I start with the nose. Mixed breeds particularly, uh, mutts and that sort of thing, or, or hound breeds, they have a bit of a jowl thing happening and they have floppy ears. So a really simple way to draw one. Draw the jowls, the floppy ears, eyes, the tongue hanging out there. And then you give them a bit of a body, draw the forelegs, the little paws. When you're looking head on, you can uh, just draw them like fingers. The way we, I draw my chubby fingers, like so. If he's sitting, you bring out the dog legs on the sides, draw a few more little fingers so it looks like he's sitting, like so. Give him a bit of a tail in the background. This was not a very good dog, but uh, gives you the idea. <laughs> Dogs' noses aren't round, as I mentioned before. If you want to give it a more dog like nose, this is. What you can do give it a bit of a spade shaped nose and when we get into the uh, into the inking again that's when you can really emphasize certain features of the dog let's draw another different kind of dog this is just kind of a, your sort of your random sort of dog wants a treat give him a little bit of a ear and he's going to be begging a little bit again you draw the the foreleg a bit of an elbow you draw your little paws this dog um, Reminds me of some of our little ones who would get right up onto their uh, hind legs and almost dance around when they were asked, when they were begging for food. So it's the same sort of thing. Three toes here for your little paws. And this this dog's got a little tail. He's begging for snacks. And of course, it's it's pretty simple. If you want to change the kind of dog, it is. You can give him floppy ears. Now the face of a dog will often have a little bit of a rise like so. That helps to give it the dog-like look. I kind of like the one I had before, the pointy ears. Reminds me of one we have right now. Oh, she's a rescue dog from, from Korea. You might want to have a dog jumping. This one will make a little or a jolly dog. It can bring up uh, the nose, a little bit of a lift to the, to the face there. Long ears flying back. Got a little collar there. Got a bit of an arc to the, to the belly. Your dog leg kicking back. A stubby little tail. This one. It's 
tongue's hanging out because he's excited. Sometimes you like to angle the eyes a little bit, gives a little more depth. And then your head, you can see the other ear back there. You draw the other leg just a little bit in the background. And then to give motion, you got the cartoonist's best friend action lines. He's jumping off the ground. Not sure what he's jumping for, but he's jumping. I see what he's jumping for. See, it's a butterfly. <laughs> Looks like food, right? <laughs> Actually, I'll give this one a longer tail. I think it works better. There. Okay. I've got to give this one some motivation too. So, how about we have a little human hand here, thumb, fingers. One's sticking out dramatically. And what do we have here? It's a big sausage. And the dog is really stunned. So now that the sketches are all done, I'll go about inking the drawings and then of course erasing all the marks or pencil marks. And then after that, we scan it into a computer and that's where the finishing work and shading is done. We've scanned the, um, the drawings into a computer and I use a PNG file. The nose, as I mentioned, my way of drawing doggy noses is I make it black like so and I take the circle tool, bring it over with the uh, cursor, pull it out till you've got a little circle, fill that with white. It gives you the idea of shape with the sun reflecting off the round nose. I'll take the line draw tool click once there drag it across let go pull it out once you can shape it pull it out again pull it out once twice and that separates the nose from the snout mouth here i will draw in some teeth <laughs> by drawing a line across like so you can draw a circle around what you want to move and just move it over and center it a bit that's better the lazy cartoonist way of drawing you can sketch things really quick and then fix it on the computer while sitting on the couch it's wonderful this is an easy way to give any character a little bit of uh, shading underneath them again i grab the circle tool click it there pull it out like so make a little oval release fill and now it looks like he's trotting along casting his shadow another thing you can do if it's say a really sunny day you can always fill this back leg in so it looks like it's shadow make sure that you uh, click trans um, transparent section when you are moving the dog like I tried to do bring him down and then he'll just sit right in the shadow there for you I can take the circle tool again circle it around his eyeball fill that up suddenly he looks startled and now he looks like he's startled and I've talked before about the importance of eyebrows Dewey doesn't usually have eyebrows completely visible but here he's startled so he's seen something startling and all you did there, of course, was give him the whites of his eyes. Let's give him a few spots. Uh, let's give him a bit of color on his nose. And again, if you want to give the impression that it's a daytime, a uh, bright sun, fill in that back leg and it looks like he's casting a shadow. Down here, 
He's leaping off the ground. This is where you can correct things easily. I wasn't happy how I drew the eyes. I'll get rid of one. I think he's looks better that way. He's really focused on the sausage. And pull it out and fill it. And now he's got a really wide eyes, you can see. Whoa, that's a big sausage there. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? To give the sausage a bit of uh, shape, we fill that up and pull it along the top like so. It looks like reflected light. Pull it up a little bit. It gives just a little bit more shape. The light will dissipate a little bit like so. Most dogs, or not most dogs, but a lot of dogs have a white belly. You may notice, so we'll give this guy a white belly. You'll see the little exclamation mark. Hopefully that's self-explanatory, but <laughs> that is a kind of a cartoonist little to indicate surprise or shock, uh, but I'm sure everyone knew that anyway, but just in case you're wondering why that's there, that's why that's there. But in any case, this is how I would color uh, or shade the cartoons for submission to, uh, to a newspaper to print cartoons in black and white or uh, shades of gray. But what's wonderful about this method of doing cartoon work on a computer is you can, with the, literally the click of a button, change it into a color cartoon. Whatever color you want. Brown ears, brown spots, uh, kind of beige color, like so. Nose can be white if you want. Boom, just like that, nice and easy. Butterfly is going to be pink with a burgundy body. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. The funny thing is, Dewey is gray. That's his color. <laughs> but we can give him, let's give him the blue collar. Boom. One thing you'll have to keep in mind, if you want to change the dog's nose color, for example, in this case, you can't do it very easily because it is black and it will bleed into the rest of the black. The whole thing turns pink. Just a little bit underneath as long as there's they're not touching and your dog has a pink nose that's a very pink nose isn't it there that's better he's got a pink nose now that's how you would do that with all these this one's okay because there is a separation so i can give rocky a pink nose if i want so now you have color pictures with the click of a button literally and that's it's a nice option to have Oh, and I forgot a tongue over here. Hang on. There. Well, thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please give me a like and be sure to subscribe. In future videos, I'll be drawing all sorts of other animals, and next time I'll try to draw a cat.